Meanwhile, a senior Trump administration official says the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and former national security advisor, Michael Flynn, also met with the Russian ambassador at Trump Tower in December. Well, joining us here now for more on this in Los Angeles, California talk radio host Ethan Behrman and California Republican National Committeeman Sean Steele. Also Democratic strategist Matthew Lippman and from San Diego, Trump supporter Gina Loudon. Okay, well, it seems right now Jeff Sessions' fate is probably in the hands of the president. And for now, Donald Trump is standing by his attorney general. Listen to this. The president, do you still have confidence in the attorney general, sir? Total. Should Sessions uh, no recuse question. himself from investigations into your campaign in Russia? I don't think so at all. When did you first learn so that Sessions spoke to the Russian ambassador? Did you know during the campaign? I don't think campaign? he should do that at all. When were you aware that he spoke to the Russian ambassador? I wasn't aware at all. When did Mr. You President, do you think he should have spoken truthfully about whether he had spoken to the ambassador? He probably did. Okay, after that less than enthusiastic statement from the president, the White House did issue a longer statement. This is what it read. Jeff Sessions is an honest man. He did not say anything wrong. He could have stated his response more accurately, but it was clearly not intentional. This whole narrative is a way of saving face for Democrats losing an election that everyone thought they were supposed to win. It is a total witch hunt. Uh, Sean, the president said he had full confidence in Michael Flynn until he didn't. Um, is it, does there come a point when Donald Trump will abandon Jeff Session like he did to Michael Flynn. Uh, not not, not going to happen. I mean, uh, the, I, I, I just enjoy the theatrics around this, and I'm, frankly, I'm a little insulted because I seem to be the only Republican that hasn't met with a Russian, and so I want to put that on the table right now. I mean, you know, this, this, this Russian ambassador who seems to be a roly-poly kind of political hack actually met with 30 Democrat senators in the last year as well. So the guy gets around, he likes meeting a lot of people, but it's not the end of the free world. It's not the end of the Trump administration. Nobody cares about it outside of Washington, D.C., and a couple of newspaper journalists. Ethan? the president standing by uh, Jeff Sessions, does he risk driving a wedge between the White House and GOP lawmakers in doing so? I don't think quite yet, but I think if there's any additional revelation related to the attorney general uh, or this goes any further in terms of perjury or something else, I think that's when it would reach that level. But for now, I mean, Trump's big thing is loyalty. Look, he's stuck by General Flynn all the way till the bitter end. That was ugly. I hear back in January, Vice President Mike Pence, he hit the Sunday talk shows to defend Michael Flynn, the former National Security Advisor, who'd actually lied about conversations that he'd had uh, with the Russian ambassador. This was the exchange between Flynn and Michael Wallace. I'm asking you a direct question. Was there any contact in any way between Trump or his associates and the Kremlin or cutouts they had? I, I joined this campaign in the summer and I can tell you that uh, all the contact by the Trump campaign and associates was with the American people. We were fully engaged with taking his message to make America great again all across this country. But if you ever that's why he won in the last election. there were any contacts, sir, I'm just trying to get an answer. Yeah, I, I, there, of course not. Why would there be any context between the campaign? Uh, Chris, the, the, th this is all a distraction, and it's all a part of a narrative to delegitimize uh, the election and, and, and to question the legitimacy of this presidency. Oh. The American people see right through it. Uh, so, Matt, to you, for, for the vice president, now it's not just Michael Flynn, uh, but it's the Attorney General Jeff Sessions. It also turns out to be uh, Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, as well as two other officials uh, from the Trump campaign who met with this Russian ambassador who gets around a hell of a lot on the sidelines of the Republican National uh, Convention back in July. Yeah, the amazing thing here is that Donald Trump could easily resolve this. He could just come out and say, here's who the people in my administration met with. Here's when they met with them and put an end to all of this. But he chooses not to. And now you've seen Michael Flynn lied about meeting with the Russians. Jeff Sessions lies about meeting with the Russian ambassador. Why is all of this happening? I think the American people want to know, which is why a lot of people are calling for a special prosecutor or an independent commission. This issue is not going away and it's paralyzing Trump with Congress. Gina, why doesn't the White House just do that? Is it a case that they don't actually know who met with uh, the Russians, or is it that they're just choosing not to do what Matt just suggested there? 
Well, first of all, Matt's assumption that there is any kind of a lie, there's absolutely zero evidence of that. There's zero evidence that there's any wrongdoing Michael whatsoever Flynn told here. The truth. And to even be concerned, and to even be concerned about this, you have to first believe the lie that the Russians actually Flynn had fired, any Gina? impact in our elections in the very first place. But to publish some random list of, of, of whoever people met with, it's the job of Senator Sessions in his position as a senator to meet with certain people. He had two staffers there. So if people really want to get upset about this, there were two staffers there. This wasn't a campaign conversation, as Matthew would like to paint it. And, and neither was the meeting after after uh, Sessions met with the, or spoke to the Heritage Foundation. He was leaving his speech and he saw and shook hands with the ambassador. Those are hardly campaign meetings and you can't qualify them as such. And to do Jeff so Sessions, is simply Gina, disingenuous. Drop, These Jeff are the Sessions same tactics know. that the Gina. left these sorry are the same drop. tactics that, that the left used during the campaign, okay. and they're not working. Gina, sorry to interrupt, but right now Jeff Sessions does not know if it was about the campaign. He says he cannot recall. It, why would he have talked about the campaign on his way out of well, a speech? Well, he doesn't speech know. He, gave per, per, he doesn't know what and, he and, said. And here's the thing. I, I, I didn't hear that, John, and that, and that may be true, but even if it is true that he doesn't remember every single detail, he knows that he didn't meet on the terms of the campaign. He knows that he met with them as a senator. He was very clear about that, and there is a big difference. There is no accusation of wrongdoing. There is no there, there. This is a non-story. Ethan, does it matter that he met him as a senator versus as uh, It doesn't campaign. because he was a surrogate of the campaign. He was one of the first people to get on the Trump train and was campaigning for uh, then candidate Donald Trump. So th that whole argument that Gina just said is completely irrelevant. He lied because he said something that was factually untrue. It, it, at the Senate Judiciary Committee hearings twice from two different senators. And now, like, like John was just pointing out, he said he doesn't recall if it was about the campaign Ethan, and perfect Ethan, lawyer speak. Ethan, this is just as important as asking Jeff Sessions what he had for breakfast three weeks ago. You're, you're, I you're mean, just, kidding me. This you're is kidding silly. me. It's trivial. The, the it's head not spy important. for no. Russia and the United States of America who ended up meeting with all of these different people other than you, of course. And a lot of Democrats, too. <laughs> but the point is, I, I is want now the Democrats Sessions to tell me is what the he attorney said to them general and what he who hey. said two things that were untrue under oath. Okay, very quick. We were going to get to Vice President Mike Pence. The Indy Star reporting that he was actually using his own email, private email address as governor. It's not illegal, but there's concerns it may have been hacked. Uh, and Sean, to you, Mike Pence, during the campaign, was one of the biggest critics of Hillary Clinton for the use of her private email server. Um, so how do you explain this one? Well, the good news is what Hillary did was illegal. She should have been prosecuted no, it for it. She wasn't Se prosecuted for it. Well, she should have been. But, well, but secondly, yeah, but, but, the, but the good news is that Mike Pence, what he did is completely legal in Indiana state law. It's very clear about that. And not only that, he didn't have a private server. And so there's a, you know, we're talking about the, the nice color of apples and these grapefruits over there. They have nothing to do, do with each other. But the Democrats are struggling so hard to find some, some dirt, some mud. And you know what? It's, it's crying wolf once again. And, and every time they do this, they try to create a temporary news story that two newspapers in America really thinks is important. It gets less credible each time. Listen, don't let your children grow up to be journalists, please. <laughs> we won't feel insulted. Our present insulted. company accepts We won't feel insulted. Matt, to bring you in there to respond to Sean that the Democrats are just being mischievous? Well, let me just go back to the thing about Jeff Sessions. Jeff Sessions is not on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. So when people meet with the Russian ambassador, they're usually on the Foreign Relations Committee. Jeff Sessions was Trump's number one advocate in Congress. So why do you think the Russian ambassador wanted to meet with Jeff Sessions, number one? And to Gina's point earlier, Mike Flynn was fired for lying. I mean, so we both we see what's happening here with this Russia situation. We need a independent commission to look into this. Donald Trump's legislative agenda is paralyzed. He's not even pushing for anything in Congress right now because of all these scandals. Uh, okay, it, it's uh, now a situation where uh, more than 100 congressional Democrats are demanding Jeff Sessions step down. Uh, this is how Nancy Pelosi, the, the minority leader of the House, described the situation for Jeff Sessions. An investigation will take us to the next place, but an, ex an investigation of those charges, of those, uh, of those actions is definitely warranted, definitely warranted. I remind you that this Congress impeached a president for something so far less having nothing to do 
uh, with his um, duties as president of the United States. Uh, Ethan, is Pelosi right here? Is there a difference between Clinton lying under oath and Jeff Sessions lying under oath? Well, I mean, there are differences in terms of the, the court that they were under oath in. But, you know, she makes a solid point. Bill Clinton was impeached over, say, you know, lying under oath. He also lost his law license, his license to practice law. That would be my concern here with Attorney General Sessions is he should be subject to that same scrutiny for lying under oath. Yeah. Uh, Gina, t to bring you in, uh, you know, you heard what Nancy Pelosi said, that there should be an investigation. Many looking to GOP lawmakers on Capitol Hill to see what stand they'll take in the days to come and to see whether they're going to put country over party. I mean, what are you, uh, how do you respond to that? I hope Nancy will keep talking just like that all the way to the midterms and all the way to 2020 because what's going to happen is that the country is so tired of the divisiveness and the fake stories that they are going to hand Trump a massive majority uh, if they keep being this way, if the Democrats keep being this way. You know, it is it is good, I have to say, to see this sort of obsession with Russia amongst the left right now who didn't seem concerned about it at all during Obama's hot mic moment where he virtually promised that after his last election uh, he would be much more flexible in his attitude to the things that Russia want and it didn't seem like they were that concerned when uh, Hillary when it was discovered that Hillary had made the Ura uh, the uranium deal with Russia so I, I'm, I'm, I'm gratified to see that Russia has become such an obsession with the Democrats I hope they take it all the way to 2020 because it ensures that Donald Trump will win president again and get even more done Good time to squeeze in a break. Uh, Gina Lallon <laughs> in San Diego, Matt Littman there in Los Angeles, also Sean Steele and, and Ethan, Ethan Behrman here on set with us thank in you, Los thank Angeles. You. Thank you all. Uh, when we come back, U.S. Attorney Jeff Sessions fighting back and insisting he did not lie about his contacts with a Russian official. More on our breaking news in just a moment. Plus, the Russian ambassador.